Welcome to Redbeard and the Den of Tools. Howdy ho guys and gals, it's Red, your friendly neighborhood tool bear, back again here in the Den of Tools. And today we're here to talk about the old WD-40, the tried and true, been around for years and years. And uh, we're going to talk about some of the secrets of WD-40, some stuff that most of you probably don't know. And the big dirty secret for WD-40, we'll start with the big one, is that, sorry, I don't care what the marketing folks over there want to tell you, it's not really a lubricant, or at least not a good one at that. WD-40, the WD in WD-40 stands for, of all things, water displacement. Yeah. <laughs> See, and that's where its its real strength lies, is in displacing water. It gets underneath stuff on, on a surface level. It's not really that great of a penetrating oil or anything like that, but it does on surface items. It is actually pretty good at cleaning and getting underneath. Think of it kind of like a liquid spatula. It gets under there, lifts it up, and then you can wipe it away. And that's where the lubricating factors in WD-40 really come into play because it easily slides that stuff right off the surface. Now, it was originally designed, of all things, as a surface protector for the old Atlas rockets. It was designed to get rubbed on and prevent rust and oxidiz oxid what? oxidation you know, when it was out there in the elements. And they quickly uh, realized it had a bunch of other properties. It could be useful for all sorts of stuff. And as I said, one of the best things about WD-40 is it, it's great for cleaning surfaces. Like uh, if you've used, uh, was it Goo Gone, stuff like that, WD-40 is another alternative for it. You spray it on something like this, it soaks in, gets underneath it, and helps get those, those nasty kind of residues and stuff off of a surface, leaving it nice and clean. Another thing that's great for, and, and this I've used it for many a times, is you ever driven down a, a freshly paved road and you get those little pellets of tar on the bottom of your car? Yep, WD-40 will get in there, lift it off, and help you get those off of your car. It really does a, a pretty good job of it, I, I, to be honest. And this is another thing I've used it for, light surface rust. It's, it's decent as a rust remover, and it has some lubricating properties, which makes it great for surface restoration. On light rust like this, you spray it on there, you let it soak in, and you go in with like a steel wool pad or something, and it just pulls that rust right off and helps you, you know, resurface that to get, get the, the, to the bare metal underneath. <laughs> yeah, I know, bare metal, I said it. Anyway, I've done a lot of these projects. In fact, you can go back and see some of the table saw restorations I've done using WD-40 in the past. Now, that said, we're talking about table saws. We can talk about the gearing underneath. Here's where it's not good. Because WD-40, once it starts to dry, and it leaves behind these oils, and those oils will attract dust and sawdust and all the sorts of grime and stuff, and will bind up. It is not a long-term lubricant. It just isn't. What you want to use in a situation like this is one of my favorite standbys, and that's white lithium grease. Now, yeah, the, it says WD-40 right there, but at this point, WD-40, this is a, a brand. They sell a lot of other stuff. Now, they have the original formula, what we showed you before, and now you've got this one. They've got the, the white lithium grease. There's other companies that sell it. I'm a big fan of this because I've got, I've got to admit, I really like the design with their, uh, their little straw thingy over there. Because, I mean, come on, admit it. How many of you had a can of WD-40 and lost the straw, and you're just sitting there going... Uh, what am I going to do now? Yeah, with this, you can use it without the straw. You can flip the straw up. You never have to worry about losing it. It's a great setup. Now, next, one of the uses a lot of people talk about is, oh, let's use WD-40 on a bike chain. Bad idea, all right? Now, here's actually where it would be good. If you need to clean the bike chain first, if it's got some light surface rust, some gunk buildup, the WD-40 will get in there, especially if you've got some old grease or something on there. It'll get in there, lift it out, then maybe hit it with a, a can of air or something, clean it out, and then you want to go in with a real bike lubricant. Now, WD-40 does sell a bike version that's specifically for that, but around you know our den here, we like to use this stuff. Finish line dry Teflon lube. Because it goes on there, it, it's, a, it's a dry coating, and it doesn't attract I me. Mean, think about it. If you're going mountain biking and stuff like that, you're going to be kicking up dirt or, or road grime, all sorts of stuff. And you don't want a lubricant that's going to get sticky and just bind that into your chain and your gears, do you? Now, the other thing we need to talk about is the fact that, you know, because we, we, we like to use stuff like this around the shop. And what do we got around the shop? We got belts and pulleys. We got O-rings and gaskets and all kind of stuff. WD-40 is a petroleum-based product, and petroleum and rubber do not mix. Now, WD-40 is not so bad that it's just going to eat it you know, like acetone or something like that. It's not that bad. 
but over consistent use, repeated exposure, it's going to degrade rubber. It's going to degrade belts. It's going to degrade gaskets uh, and even some plastics. So you want to be careful what you use it on. You need to think about that ahead of time. You don't want to be using this on it. Trust me in that. Now, a lot of people like to say, well, at least on the bottle or at least on their website, they say that it's also good for surface rust protection. And I'm sure when it was invented, it was probably the best product on the market. But that was a long time ago. They've even come out now with, with an actual long-term uh, corrosion inhibitor. And there's a lot of other products like this on the market. Uh, again, I'm, I'm a, you know, I like the WD-40 stuff. It's easy to grab a hold of. And uh, this one doesn't have the, the kind of bottle that I like. But you get the idea. And the fact of the matter is that you don't want to use the WD-40 because of it, the oils and stuff that puts on it, it lasts a little while. It's great for short-term protection, but not for long-term protection. If you're storing stuff for a long time, you're going to want to use something more substantial like this. Now, I often on the web will see WD-40 life hacks. I got to tell you, you need to hold, hold the horses on that one. Just slow down, okay? Because there's a, a lot of the stuff that they suggest here that you, you just don't want to use WD-40 on. I'm sorry. Uh, one of the number one things I hear people say is, oh, it's great for door hinges when they squeak. No, not really. The problem with it is you spray it on there, and what happens is, it's, is it, it breaks up the gunk that's in there and kind of turns it into a lubricant. And for a little while, the door is fine. But if you have noticed, a week or two, you're back, the door squeaking again. You're going back with the WD-40. Well, the guys at WD-40 in the marketing, they love this idea because you're constantly using the product. What you need to do is maybe use some WD-40 to clean it out, get the gunk out of there, then go back in with a silicone lubricant. Silicone lubricants are an amazing lubricant. You can use them in all sorts of situations. They almost never dry out because it's silicone. And they, uh, they, they don't grab a lot of the gunk the, the same way other lubricants can. Uh, this is, and, and because of the nature of silicone, it's long, long lasting. You can use them on your car. You can use them on door seals. You can use all sorts of places where you wouldn't want to use something that's going to eat into rubber or that's going to, you know, basically evaporate shortly thereafter. Now, another one I hear is, oh, it's great for cleaning out or lubricating locks. Oh, there's a lot of locks that have uh, pins in them that are made of materials that can be, you know, degraded again by WD-40. So not really what you want to use. And again, it's not a long-term lubricant. Shut up, Moto. Nobody likes you. Boy, he's an, just a, an attention-seeking little bugger, isn't he? Anyway, so the WD-40, is, again, you're not going to want to use it. Maybe for cleaning out the lock, if you got a lot of grime in your lock or something. But this is the kind of place where you're going to want a dry lubricant with specifically a graphite lubricant. All right. This is something that goes in. You can have it can have a, a vehicular uh, you know item to it, maybe an alcohol based or something that will help get it to someplace. Or you can also get it in a, a squeeze bulb kind of thing where it's just a powdered uh, graphite, and that gets in there and it acts as you know a uh, and, and, it, and that'll give it get in there. It'll it's a great lubricant and it won't attract any other dust or dirt or lint or anything else. Now, another hack I hear is you could spray it on leather to help waterproof it. Oh my gosh, please don't do that. Don't take a nice pair of boots or something else or gloves or something and spray WD-40 on it. That's not what this is designed for. It's not what's properties are. Will it work in the short term? Yeah. But you repeated use of this stuff, well, it will break down the leathers and it will leave you with, with something you're not going to be happy with. There are products on the market designed specifically for this. I'm a big fan of mink oil. Let's face it. I'm a bear. I don't like minks. So <laughs> what is a great use after you've had a light snack? Well, mink oil, of course. And uh, I, I kid, but you know, I've used these on leather jackets. I've used them on leather bags. Mink oil, back in the day, has been used for hundreds of years to waterproof travelers' belongings and stuff. And trust me, a well-conditioned leather bag or boots or coat that's got a good you know, coating of mink oil on it, Man, rain and snow and stuff will just sheet like water off a duck. No no worries there. All right, and another one I, I keep seeing is the, oh, you can use it on your cell phone to clean your cell phone, like, especially if you've got those buttons that stick and everything else. Yeah, you know what those plastics are made out of? 
Yeah, the kind of stuff that a petroleum-based product is going to break down. In fact, if you go even to iPhones, uh, their website, and they talk about how to clean your phone, they specifically say, you know, do not use cleaning products on this. And I'm <laughs> Deputy 40. Oh my gosh, can you imagine if it got in there, what it would do to a mo uh, the the motherboard in that that uh, that phone? Oh, it, it would eat it up like lunch. Now, you don't want to use stuff like this. Use a damp rag, get in there, clean it. At worst case, if it's that bad, take the case apart. It's not that hard. Clean it out, put it back together. That's the way you do it. Do it right. Use the right tools for the job. Uh, another one I see. WD, did you know the WD-40 keeps weather stripping and rubber car door seals soft and prevents drying? Did you know it also eats rubber? Yeah, this, this again, when you see these life hacks and stuff on the internet, maybe do your research first before, you know, falling in with them. At the end of the day, WD-40 really is kind of your uh, multi-tool in a can. It does a lot of jobs good enough, but it doesn't do any one particular job extremely well. And... You know, there's these days we have a lot of other solutions. Now, WD-40 as a company has a lot of those solutions, and I recommend maybe you give them a try. I like a lot of their products. There may be other products that you prefer. If you've got a, a product or suggestion that you prefer over WD-40, comment down below. Let everyone else know. I'll put some links to some of the products that I use down there. You can check them out. But at the end of the day... <laughs> Maybe, maybe think twice before pulling out the WD-40 and finding a product that works better for the job that you needed to do. Well, there you go. There's your super secrets that 99% of you didn't know about one of your favorite tools around the shop. Hope you enjoyed it. Maybe we'll do some more of these coming up soon here. Let me know whether you liked it or not. Anyway, till next time, that's all the bear has for you. You all take care. God bless. And as always, say it with me. Shine on.